Hey folks, the Red Scourge here, and welcome back to the Miami Death Penalty Dynasty build. Um, this week I wound up using a different offensive playbook. This is just an old custom one I had. That uh, It's just a multiple playbook with a bunch of different stuff that I like to run in it. Uh, I was a little bit more successful using this one on offense than the stock Miami playbook, but for the next game I'm just going to make a very uh, stripped down pro style playbook to run with hopefully for the rest of the year. Uh, this video is a little bit longer. Uh, I realized after putting up my last one that they were just kind of big play highlights and you didn't really get to see uh, all the bad plays. <laughs> um, the, the bad plays by Miami. Some of them were my fault. Some of them were just really bad, uh, really bad players. So I left in my first offensive drive and then Boston College's first offensive drive and I think I'm going to do that from here on out just to kind of give you a, a taste of play by play like how this team is improving or regressing as the case may be. The only other new thing uh, is that I went back and looked at some of the NCAA's sanctions against SMU and I'm not entirely clear how this worked but their first year back playing football, I believe it was 1988, their first first year fielding a team again, um, they were allowed to recruit, but only on campus, which is interesting. So essentially these are walk-on players. I don't know. I wasn't able to figure out how to do it exactly in this game because they were able to recruit on campus and they were allowed a, a handful of scholarships, but they weren't able to recruit outside of the University of Miami and since this team is so bad and I wanted to somehow replicate that but also keep it fun for me playing because honestly um, this has been kind of a slog already with this team at the beginning of the game it feels like I might be able to win and as it goes on it's just like pretty demoralizing so I wanted to bring in some recruits for next year. I'm going to accept transfers at the end of the season, but I won't be able to use them on the field till the following season. So the parameters I used personally were I was going to recruit anyone uh, within Miami-Dade County, which was very limiting, and I actually had to keep going back to Wikipedia and looking up these random towns that EA had in the game that happened to be in Miami-Dade County. Um, and I used to live in, in South Florida. and There were a bunch of these towns I'd never heard of, but I guess EA saw fit to have recruits come from them in Miami-Dade. But So uh, within the county, as a free-for-all, um, it, granted, it's not really a free-for-all because I can't, I can't pull in top recruits. So um, I was going to let myself recruit from within the county, and also anyone within the state that had me as their number one school. Um, and granted, this is, I believe this Boston College game is week four of the, of the season. So a bunch of these guys are already recruited by other people. I think the only recruit that fell into that first overall within the state of Florida, but, with, but outside of Miami-Dade, is a, I think a three-star corner. But um, next week's video, I'll show you guys who I'm recruiting. It's less than 10. Um, it's pretty It's pretty sad. Um, and none of them are real playmakers, but they're better than some, you know, well, they're better than all the guys on this roster. Uh, it's kind of sad when you get excited to see a 60 overall after you scout them. But that's really the only thing that has changed. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm going to switch up my playbook a little bit and, and try to do something a little bit more pro style. I've never been a real big fan of the, the single back ace formation, but I'm going to throw some, some single back in there, do some eye formation and shotgun and keep it, keep it pretty basic. Keep, try to keep a very stripped down playbook, something that you might actually implement with a team that was this, uh, this bad you're not going to have a have a real big offensive or defensive playbook for that matter but uh, I haven't really looked at that I'm just running one of my 425 playbooks that I really like with a it's 425 with a 43 sort of run base but uh yeah that's about it guys appreciate you watching and checking out the channel
also wanted to give a quick shout out to YouTube user TDK1984 in an earlier video when I was explaining the setup to this dynasty I had mentioned that SMU stayed in the Big 8 conference after the death penalty when they came back to play football uh, he is right in correcting me it was actually the old Southwest Conference interestingly enough the Southwest Conference formed with the Big 8 to become the Big 12 in I believe 19. 96, so I'm not sure how I got to Big 8, but that was just kind of a funny little mistake in there. I appreciate you guys watching the videos and supporting the channel. I'll be out with the next game shortly here, and I'll see you then. And they tack on three. Permack brings his troops out onto the field for the first drive of the game. it to the back across midfield inside the 30 the 10 touchdown Boston College third down eight yards to go ball on the 28 Around the 26 yard line. That's a loss of two yards on the play. That'll make it fourth and ten. They'll work the right side. He's at the 30, he's at the 20, and he's finally knocked out of bounds. It's first and ten. Ball on the 16 yard line. Stopped on that run. You know what? That was just a nice job. Of They'll work the left side, and he's tackled at the 22. Trying to get that home field advantage, and the defense is doing their best to fire up this crowd. Setting up blockers or running backs. Got it on the screen. Brought down around the 11-yard line. I know the defense would have liked to have... Boston College is up four. The kick is up, and it splits the uprights. Even though they gave up a field goal here, that defense is feeling pretty good. The kicker looks like he's ready to kick this one off. One back deep to return. He'll return it from the four-yard line. Got the corner. The 50. And he's brought down at the 26. That was simply a sensational return right there. For it. They're all tied in on the line here on fourth and short. Look for it on the ground, and he's not going to get there. That was a pretty makeable field goal attempt, and I think they should have... He's to the 20, at the 30. He's tackled around the 48-yard line. He's carried this offense on his back, that's for sure. He's got 200. So we'll probably get one last heave to the end zone here before halftime. He's looking for six. Touchdown, big play. kills everything this defense has worked for in this first half. You can't let them score with no time left. Line. It's second down. Now he shows his running ability. So they pick up big yards on the option keeper. I thought he's going to break that one for a touchdown. You couldn't draw that up any better. made at the 33. 
Here's a running play. He's at the 20. Inside the 10. Huge gain, and that sets him up. Nice. They might be coming here. Tackle just outside the goal line. That brings up second and goal. Inside the 30. And they finally knock him out at the 14. Excellent execution on one side of the ball that time. And it looks to me like the defense was in a little state of confusion. Let's pass. And he snags that one. Touchdown, Eagles. Hold everything, folks. There's a marker down. Let's get the call. Russell foul, roughing the passer, defense. And for Wade, he's been responsible for three scoring. He's taken down. Round the 40, two wide set, and he comes in with his dime package. Throws complete, he's got room to work. And he's tackled around the 41 yard line. throw to the tight end. He's knocked out of bounds at the 27. From the 27 yard line. Second down. Here's a run. And he has it on the corner. Gains his way to the 16 yard line. Sure, they won't win it, but they haven't quit yet. That's a strong, resounding win. Sure, it won't shock anybody, but this club put on a very solid performance today. Boston College simply dismantled these guys, and I don't think anybody was figuring on anything less. For EA Sports and Kirk Herbstreit, this is Brad Nessler saying thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.